Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo, I am from Portugal, some people ask me that, and today I'm showing you the review of the long-awaited Parker 51, the new version, the version that was released in 2021. This pen had, uh, was scheduled to be released in the third in the last trimester of 2020 but it got delayed so it was released in february 2021 so for this unboxing i have to first of all to thank apple boom for sending me this pen as a loan for review i will leave in the description below the links where you can get this pen if you are interested in it. You can see other previous videos about this pen, like the unboxing and my previous thoughts about it, and now we'll see if my previous thoughts confirm or not about my opinion of this pen. So first of all, let's take a look. It comes inside a box, white cardboard box, that has just the very simple information. It, it says it was made in France and here it has some information about the new Europe and where you can check information in parkerpen.com. The most amazing thing is today that I am recording this review. If you go to Parker pen.com there is no information yet about this new release this is something that i cannot understand this is the release of uh, the re-release of uh, an iconic pen and there is no information in the official site of the brand that's strange the box has this is very sturdy but it has this kind of cardboard feel on the outside it has embossed with gold parker established 1888 and then the, this by appointment to the Queen and the Prince of Wales there. When you open the box, you will see this padded surface that says again, Parker, the logo, Parker established 1888. And you have this pen bed with the pen and these elastic loops where you can put extra pens. You take these out by lifting this little tab and you will find one ink cartridge loose there and a big space that is empty. Now, let's talk about this. I find it very useful to have an extra cartridge or just one cartridge. Oops. It fell on the floor and I kicked the tripod and did very stupid things. Sorry. So the, it has a, a cartridge, black one, which is nice. I prefer black cartridges than blue cartridges, but it's only myself. And we have this very big blank space. One thing I, I think this pen costs 260 euros, this variation for 260 euros. They could have included here a full box of cartridges. It would be nicer than just one, but However, it's nice to have a cartridge, so you buy a pen and you can immediately start writing with it. Otherwise, you would be stuck, now what can I do with it? Unless you have a bottle, an ink bottle or extra cartridges with you. I think it's always nice to offer at least one. And I would think at this price point, it would be more adequate to have a full box. I also think that when you have a pen that is a re-release of an iconic pen and I think some extra information would be nice to be provided. So it is very strange not to have a leaflet here and because this has the typical size of a leaflet, I don't understand why they don't do it. Maybe the early release they missed that, but I don't think it makes any sense. Uh, they could even do... Uh, in fact, do you, do you ever read those booklets? I usually don't, but if you if you are having a re-release of an iconic pen, some historical background about that pen or some other details might be 
interesting and nice and fun to have there. One thing they could have done was to go with some designs of vintage filling instructions and this, this little paper that said how to fill and it had for 61, 65, 51, 45 and they have simple instructions and it, they could do it with this kind of vintage look and advertise their uh, cartridges. I don't know why they didn't do it. It's strange and it's interesting because this they advertise the 51 as a cartridge converter pen. And there was also this one that is also very nice, very simple and says the the, the basic information. I know all we know that, but I think it's always nice to include something here. Now, let's go back to the pen and let's take it out, close the box and put this away. And now, let's take a look at the pen. First thing I have to say about this pen, and I will make a comparison, those versus videos that I make between the two variations, but just for comparison now, I have to say that this pen really has the kind of silhouette that remembers us of the vintage Parker 51. I think there is no doubt about that. So outside it looks like that one. But um, when you look at outside, so you have a metal cap with a arrow shaped clip. This clip throughout the Parker history had many shapes and variations. Even in the original, let's call it like that, the original version or the original release of the Parker 51, there were several versions, several lengths and slightly different designs. And even there was the Blue Diamond one. So we cannot say that it's different from the old. Even the old, they changed it a lot. It has a, a metal jewel on the top of the cap. You have this clip. You have the cap that is made of metal and has a lot of small lines. This is, and it has a band that says there Parker and Friends and then the date code. It is nice and simple. And when you look at these, and if I get my black costume Parker 51, you can see here that the cap has, the lines on this cap are in groups of five that go there and has, and it doesn't have that cap lip. But if we go to this older vacuumatic Parker 51, that has the blue diamond variation, you can see it is quite similar. It also has a smooth uh, cap band with Parker 51 and or Parker at least. And then it has all these lines, not grouped in groups of five, but just the, exactly the same kind of finish you have on this pen. So very similar to the, to the overall design that we expect from a Parker 51. It has a plastic or a resin barrel that is black and shiny. It is also available in other colors like burgundy, teal, plum, which is interesting because they go, they went and grabbed old colors from the old Parker 51. I think in the future they may do, and at least I hope they do, some other colors like cocoa and uh, mustard, and maybe forest green and dove gray. It would be nice if they brought back some of the older colors in the future, but I guess they may do that. It will depend, at least in my opinion, in how well this pen will sell. Now, when you uncap the pen, you will see the biggest difference from this pen to the older Parker 51. And that biggest difference is the way that the cap gets out of the pen. In this one, you have to unscrew. This is a screw fit cap. By the way, this cap takes one turn and a little, not even a quarter, just 
just above one turn to get out of the pen. And when you look at it, now this is the first difference, so you have cap threads. The second difference that you, you'll see from most of older Parker 51s is that it has also a cap, uh, section ring that is quite fat. This is the fattest one on the older Parker 51s, but there were models where there were more thin uh, bands, so this was variable also. And you have a section that is rounded at the end, and you can see the tip of the nib there. And when you look on the underside, you will see the feed, and you can see there there is a F engraved on the feed to say it is a um, fine nib. When you look at an older Parker 51, you will see that opening is much smaller and you see much less of the feed. And if you look at a Parker 21, you will see more that kind of open opening where you can see the feed there. And there are also some other pens that are inspired in this one, like the Aurora 88. And you can see also a bigger opening there. Okay. Let me check my notes and talk a little bit more about this. Um, so these because you have these it's not a metal ring you have the because you have the threads you have a little uh, diameter difference from the barrel to the section and you can see that you may be worried it is too much i don't think so i thought it was much worse when i saw the first pictures of this pen in fact the difference between the width here and there over the ring that is flush to the rest of the section is just from 10 to 11 millimeters so it's not a big difference it's more visible than you can actually feel in your fingers you can feel it but you don't feel it that much the the sorry the barrel unscrews and you can see here inside the metal threads that go into the section and that screw here on the barrel. You also have a converter that comes included at the pen, at least in the pens with the gold nib version. I've seen some videos out there that show that this pen didn't have the that the, the steel nibbed pens don't come with a converter and I think they should come. I think it is a nice thing to give to the user a converter and a cartridge. If you ask me, for me, if this pen was for me, I would, be, I would think it was nice if they provided a converter, but because I'm quite a big collector, I wouldn't mind that much if mine didn't come with a converter because I have lots of converters. I have more converters than pens that I have in use at each time, so I don't need another one, but I think it is some convenient thing. Just to talk about the price, this gold nib version is it costs 90 costs 260 euros and the steel nib version costs 90 euros. So it's much more um, acceptable or not, not to call acceptable, af affordable. Now, I'm just going for a few objective thoughts on this pen. And the first one is that this pen is obviously inspired by the Parker 51, although this one has the threaded cap that I told you about. Now, the cap, the threads are machined 
out of the resin or the plastic and on the cap the threads are on the metal part so you have metal threads on plastic threads and this may be a concern and this, this may be a concern in two ways if you ever used an older Parker 51 you are used to do this so if this pen looks quite a lot like a Parker 51 it is a Parker 51 you grab this pen and you'll do that and the cap will not come out so you may put some extra stress on the threads because it is like instinctive you try to uncap the pen that's not a nice thing to do the other thing is that the metal may wear out the the threads yes there may that's theoretically a problem however i find these threads to be very well machined when you are in cap when you are capping the pen you don't even feel the, the threads at all so uh, it, it's like if they didn't touch each other so maybe that's not a problem but i'm not sure in fact parker we if we choose the, the case of the parker dual fold you have plastic threads inside the cap and plastic threads on the barrel but when you unscrew the, the barrel you have plastic thread plastic inner threads of the barrel and metal threads on the section and i never found this to be a problem however to be honest we don't unscrew the section as many times as we unscrew the cap so only time and long-term reviews will be able to really assess the quality of the threading system on this pen there um, about other things the pen feels very nice on the hand you can hold it very well it's very well balanced i think it's really well made you can post it it posts deeply and securely although it allows for some movement in one way or another you don't need to be afraid of it scratching the barrel because what touches the barrel is not the metal part of the cap but the inner cap that is plastic that fits on the plastic barrel so no problem there it is very convenient very nice weighted however when you hold an older parker 51 and i'm not talking about this one the vacuumatic i'm talking about the aerometric you feel it like being a little bit more solid and why is that because the filling system system of the aerometric is a rubber sack that has a metal casing and a bar cannot press because the pen is full of ink that will hold ink inside so this will provide some extra weight to the pen and that kind of difference you may feel but it's not a light pen not a heavy pen it is very very comfortable to use in my opinion about the nib i have to say that this nib is very smooth you will see it working in the the writing uh, test and it is very well tuned and i only find the problem that it is only at least for now it is only available as f and m and i think people mostly nowadays people are looking for some strange nibs strange in my opinion because for me f and m are great even extra fine is good but there's not available but people like broads double broads oblique italic and i think this may be a little failure on the parker side and now let's jump to the next part i think the then that no modern reincarnation of the parker 51 will ever please most of the old users of the parker 51 actually no other version ever did so overall what i can say it is a very nice pen with a cartridge converter system which is my favorite uh, i would prefer it to be available as a push fit cap and not a screw fit cap and i also think that the kind of design of this pen should have been based in the parker sonnet kind of design but a little fatter and with a hooded nib but i like 
this way more. But this was the decision they made. I would prefer that way. I also love the colors available, although one of the most desirable ones, the plum, is only available in gold nib, and that makes that more expensive. And why would you pay more for a gold nibbed pen? There's no, no real justification to buy a more expensive pen for a gold nib. You will not use anything of the flex or anything of the gold because the tip of the hood is very close, so you don't have room to flex it. And I have to say that I don't like the nib uh, diversity that is available, which is F's and M's only. About size comparison, we have here the Parker Duf Centennial Dufold and the Lamy Safari, and when we uncap all the pens, they are of similar size, as you can see, and the Parker 50, sorry, out of camera, they are kind of similar size, the Parker 51 is a little smaller, but if you post it and this pen is good to be posted, you see it is much wider, much bigger. About the, you may say it, it's not that wider, but it's not that thinner than the Parker Dufold grip section, and it is a very nice width to hold the, the pen. Now, let's go for the writing sample. And here we have the pen and paper, and let me show you. So, this is the Parker 51 Deluxe Gold Trim. It has a fine gold nib, ah, and it is black, of course. And we have the paper, which is the Rhodia dot pad and the ink is some Parker vintage Parker Quink black and this pen is really perfect on the paper it has almost no feedback I like the, ra the way it writes a lot although I even like a little bit more of feedback but it is normal about the width of the pen, I have to say that the nib is a little bit, you can say it is maybe a little fat for a fine nib, but it is quite normal in Parker nibs. I have here a Parker Centennial Lufold with a fine nib, and you can see it is comparable. So it is the regular Parker F nib, which may be a little bit broad for some people. About the writing, it writes really well, it doesn't skip, it is very very well tuned, very smooth and you just get to be, get used to hold the pen in the right angle because you don't really see the tip that well. This is the line, you can try to force it a little bit and it will open a little bit more and the line will be thicker but not much and regarding the reverse writing it is a little scratchy not much it's not pleasant but you can use it if you want to have an extra fine line about the wetness of the nib it is quite wet i think it is very well tuned and as i say about some pens this is a writer's pen i really think it is nice one i would not pay the full price for a gold one, but some colors are only available in gold nibs and the gold caps are only available with gold nibs, so they are more expensive. The, the other ones, I think, have better price. I think this is a very nice edition, much better than I thought. I would prefer a cap that was not a screw fit cap, but these are my thoughts. I tried to be as objective as I could and I received this pen very recently, but I've been using it every day since I received it and I'm writing with it and drawing with it a lot to be able to provide you a fair review. So, this is all I have to show you. I have to thank you to Joost Appleboom for sending me this pen for review and I have to thank you all for watching for such long videos. And I will see you next time. Bye!